Hi friends, my name is Tris and this is No Boilerplate, focusing on fast, technical videos. Today I'm going to show you how to oxidize your entire toolkit, from editors down to the shell. Your whole user space could be written in Rust and be a single cargo install away. I've been thinking about writing this video for some time, but the final push was when I read an article about the UUtils project, which I will tell you about in a moment. As ever, everything you see in this video is part of a literate programming document that can be extracted and compiled with native Rust tooling. Part 1. Shell and Userland. Actually, before you install all this, you should use SCCache to dramatically reduce your compile times. SCCache reuses already compiled artifacts to skip redundant compilation, and in production can use a cloud-backed cache. When you're installing system tools that very often are built by people that always use the same stable version of a dependency, you might unnecessarily recompile that dependency very often. With SCCache, you won't. Let's start with the shell. Most shells are stuck in the 80s. Bash and Z shell certainly are only giving slight improvements over SH in the name of backwards compatibility. Fish has the right idea, finally a shell for the 90s, and you can configure it in a web browser even. But we are Rust developers, we are not so timid. New is a shell built around the language of the same name. New draws inspiration from projects like PowerShell, functional programming languages, and modern CLI tools. Rather than thinking of files and folders as raw streams of text, New looks at each input as something with structure. One of the stealth benefits you get from breaking with traditional tooling is that new works everywhere Cargo does. Mac, Linux, ARM computers like Raspberry Pi and my setup, M1s running Asahi Linux, even vanilla Windows in addition to WSL. The tools I'm going to tell you about today compile across all these architectures. In fact, your whole user land could be uniform wherever you work, as the UUtils project shows. UUtils aims to work on as many platforms as possible to be able to use the same utils on Linux, Mac, Windows and other platforms. This ensures, for example, that scripts can be easily transferred between platforms. They chose Rust not only because it's fast and safe, but also excellent at writing cross-platform code. If anyone has used Sigwin on Windows, it reminds me a bit of that project. The chief reason that everything you see today works nearly everywhere is that Rust developers tend to rewrite the platform-dependent C libraries that other languages have to rely upon. The rewrite it in Rust meme exists for a reason. This makes our applications more portable. Core Utils has no dependencies other than Rust, for example, but comes with an interoperability cost. Many people are upset that Rust doesn't play well with C++. Not me. I don't care about C++ compatibility at all. And every month, it gets less and less relevant. For legacy, sure, keep using C++. But for new projects, we'll see. Let's crack on. Prompt toolkits are often written in their native shell and are slow. Starship is as fast as it's possible to be, and that gives us superpowers without slowing down our shell. It runs as well on my 10-year-old ThinkPad as on this M1 Linux machine. Starship has a lot of plugins. I've even deleted some to save space. Many enabled out of the box, such as version control and programming package versions, but some require small config. Others, such as the AWS plugin, you might want to turn off for being too noisy. But you can craft the exact prompt you want with low latency as it's built with the fastest high-level language on the planet. Exa is a gorgeous replacement for LS, the command we type all the time, giving it more features and better defaults. It uses colors to distinguish file types and metadata. It knows about symlinks, extended attributes, and Git. It's small, fast, and like everything I'm showing you today, just one single binary that you can compile anywhere. DU plus Rust equals dust. Like DU, but more intuitive a visual disk usage tool that graphs where your precious hard disk space has gone. Here are the biggest music and podcast projects in my music directory, for example. Colourful, useful, keep it around, you never know when you might need it. While we're replacing standard Unix tools, we might as well keep going with a cat replacement. Bat, the cat with wings, allows rich syntax highlighting of files when you don't want to open up a full editor. Bat will hand over to a pager, such as less, except if a terminal is not detected. Bat transparently acts like cat when it detects non-interactive use, so it is safe to alias the cat. Zelige is everything you have to configure Tmux to be. Like Tmux or Screen, it is a terminal multiplexer with support for tabs, splits, and rich customization. Unlike either, Zelige has glorious out-of-the-box defaults. There is also a WebAssembly plugin system for writing text-based widgets. Built in, there is a directory listing plugin, amongst two others. Zelige is ostentatious, colorful, wasteful of screen space, and I love it. Mprox is similar to Zelige, Tmux, or Screen, but it's optimized for long-running, non-interactive single processes like dev servers, databases, or streaming service logs. 
With a config, or just by listing the commands on the command line, mprox runs each of them in its own vertical tab, with a simple color-coded up or down showing if the command is still running or not. Vim bindings are used to switch between commands, and they can be restarted by typing R, started and stopped, with S and X, and new commands can be added interactively, with A. Ripgrep replaces find and grep with one unified tool. You might have used ripgrep already, it's the fastest grepper in town and already quite popular. This is because it is built on top of Rust's regex engine, which uses finite automata, simmed and aggressive literal optimizations to make searching very fast. If you use grep, ag, git grep, ucg, pt or sift, you would do well to upgrade. Now we've got a foundation and can use our system ergonomically, let's get some awesome development tools. Bob is a cross-platform and easy-to-use NeoVim version manager, allowing for switching between versions right from the command line. I found it after discovering the Ubuntu repos did not have NeoVim version 08, which is the minimum version that my preferred distribution, Astro NVim, supports. Though the NeoVim team build comprehensive packages and installers for every system, I try not to do in a web browser what I can do on the command line, a theme you will see more of today. When I read that Bob is cargo installable, Life was complete, or it will be once my Arch 64 patch has been accepted for M1 Linux. Though I have used the Excellence Terminal UI Lazy Git for many years, it started to slow down for me on extremely large repositories. While Git UI here is still under development and has not yet reached parity with Lazy Git, it's got everything I need for day-to-day -day use and is fast and pure Rust. iRust is a smorgasbord of Rust tools in one easy-to-use command. In addition to interactive experimentation, like you might be used to in Python, Ruby, and JavaScript, you can debug Rust code, expand macros, and even use iRust from an editor for REPL-driven development. If you want all of this in a browser, I recommend using the EVCXR kernel inside a Jupyter notebook. This tool is not actually pure Rust and requires the Jupyter framework to be installed, which you probably can get from your package manager, but EVCXR is a Rust kernel for Jupyter and it's so good I simply must include it in this list. Useful for data scientists, teaching, or anywhere a graphical representation of data is useful, Jupyter has been the standard notebook for over a decade at this point. Most languages have kernels that work with it already, and here's the Rust one. Built by Google, the champions of the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing competition. Bacon is your constant companion while learning and writing Rust at all levels. On the surface, it just reruns cargo clippy, build, test, or run, and you get those errors from your LSP-capable IDE, right? not as nicely as they are in Bacon. It refreshes instantly, is flicker-free, and I find it a complement to an LSP editor, not a replacement. A bonus is that in the run mode, it acts as an auto-reloading server when your programming is a long-running service. Change the code, and Bacon will kill it and run it again. Hot reloading, almost. In my quest to never open a web browser, a challenge I sometimes face is that I need to do a search on crates.io. Cargo Info does exactly what I want, and has options to show the features when you need to remind yourself what to Cargo add. And finally, some fun. NCSpot is an NCurses Spotify client with Vim bindings. First launch, it asks you for credentials, then saves them. It even remembers your settings and positions in a track between executions, allowing you to listen to long-form content like podcasts and pick up where you left off. If you're looking for a podcast, I make a few. It integrates with your desktop hotkeys, and if you have plugins showing now playing, it'll show up there too. Pausmo is a tiny Pomodoro timer for the command line. It defaults to 25 minutes work, 5 minutes break, with a longer break after a few iterations. I have found the Pomodoro technique essential for training my focus over the years. It also has a stopwatch and timer subcommands, which are nice little extras. While pinging can give you a sense of if your connection is up, it doesn't tell you the speed. You can use standard Unix tools to do this, but not many are as easy or have the national infrastructure already available as Speedtest. You don't have to go to the website if you use Speedtest RS. I imagine that fully half the time I open a browser while I'm supposed to be working on either no boilerplate scripts or my fiction podcast is because of Wikipedia. Wikitui fixes that particular firehose in a way that is 10 times faster than looking something up on the web. RTX is a faster, pure Rust ASDIF clone. One of the tools I use in all of my projects, no matter what language, is ASDIF for a version manager. It switches versions of Python, Node, Ruby, anything I need day to day. It is a drop-in replacement for ASDIF with plugins and tool versions file support compatible with any language, so no more installing NVim, Node Environment, Node Env, High Env, etc. And it's about 20 to 200 times faster than ASDIF. It was the final piece in the puzzle of oxidizing my entire life. Thank you for your time, and please tell me about cool Rust tools I might have missed in the comments below. If you'd like to support my channel, get early ad-free and tracking-free videos, VIP Discord access, or one-to-one -one mentoring, head to patreon.com forward slash noboilerplate.
If you're interested in transhumanism and hope punk stories, please check out my science fiction podcast, Lost Terminal. Or if urban fantasy is more your bag, click the bottom video to listen to a strange and beautiful podcast I produce called Modem Prometheus. Transcripts and compile check markdown source code are available on GitHub, links in the description, and corrections are in the Pindarata comment. Thank you so much for watching, talk to you on Discord.